Hello everyone, I'm Eric Hux of Hux Racing, and in this video I'm going to show you how to prepare an AW11 MR2 chassis harness for standalone use or K-Swap or any other ECU swap use. Really we're just simplifying the chassis side of the harness to make it easier for you to take care of the end, to essentially separate the engine harness section from the chassis harness to simplify the install. Uh, what we have here is what the finished product is going to look like in the, the patch harness piece. Uh, the things to take note is the N1 connector, which is in the trunk, and the M2 connector, which is going to be beside the fuse box. Uh, there's going to be a, a little block with two gray connectors, and this is the one of the connectors we're going to keep. And this is the 12-pin Molex. I'm going to show you how to wire in. So this is what the finished product looks like. Uh, this... Typically people are putting the battery in the trunk, so I have the battery lead extended out. I don't have it terminated yet. The customer can terminate whatever end they want on that. And then this is just a pigtail to reverse lights. So that's what the finished product looks like. Now let's uh, show you how to get it done. AW11 engine harness. The, you know, I could be wrong, but 86 to 89, they all look pretty similar to this. From my memory, the 85s, for some reason, they bring the connector in from the, like this connector here will be brought in from the opposite side on the, uh, on the 85s, but the wiring is still the same. Uh, and then when we simplify, you're still going to be bringing it in from the left side of the chassis, running it into the trunk. So, we want to get this connector out of here. We'll go ahead and label this. This is going to be our M2 connector that we're going to save. M2. And then this over here is our N1. N1. And let's see. This is pin 1 on the N1 connector. Let's just start chopping crap. Really, we're just trying to get a get a little bit of this cut back so we can get some length on this connector. I'm not sure how much of this harness you're going to try to save for yourself, but we know we're tossing the rest of this out. We can just end up cutting a bunch of connector ends off to speed this process up. centered on the table so it doesn't run off the screen here. Okay. So from experience, I know a lot of these wires run over to these connectors. So to simplify this, I'm not keeping any of this anyways. Lop. Like somebody had a squirrel. Let's see. That will be Jack Weisenberger. So now that we got most of that peeled back, get a little more length out of this. Try not to shake the camera on the table.
Now we know any of these sections here that have little pigtails breaking off in them anyway, we're gonna cut it short of that anyhow. Uh, they're not really concerned, we just want enough length to come out and uh, add a butt connector to it. So there's the N1 connector. I'm going to show you how to depan all the wires we know we're not going to use anyways. So N1. Now we want to get some length on this M2 connector. We don't have a repair going on underneath all this. Not sure what's going on here. And yeah, we got some shit. Okay, well, we don't want to rely on that with our rework, so I'm going to cut this guy all the way back to here. And these other ones. I'm going to cut to here. So, that is all we are keeping. Okay, and this is the diagram that's going to show which wires we're going to be using from the N1 and the M2. I'm going to show you how to wire those into the 12 pin Molex. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to delete the unused wires from this guy. Now, you just use a standard pick. But we know we're keeping one. Okay, so this is the N1. You see the face of the connector. I got it marked here. That's pin one. So we know we're keeping, and it's numbered across. It shows on the diagram. So one, two, three, four. So we're keeping one, two. Six. And down here, 10 and 15. That'll be 10 and 15. So, and pull five out. 11 and 16 out. Okay. Pull out pin 7. We're just reaching back in there and knocking the connector pin lock back. Moving 20. And essentially every pin down the side of this face. You'll see there's some redundant colors in here, like white with a green stripe. Getting those out is going to make it a lot easier to know which wires we're wiring into. Good part about this is if you accidentally pull out a wire you, you need it, you can easily just push it right back in. And we should have 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine wires left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Cool. Try to straighten this out a little bit. I don't mind them having uh, various lengths. It makes it easier for the butt connectors not to stack up when we start to splice all this stuff together. Straighten this out. Alter this guy back a little bit. There we go. Okay, so that's the N1. Not sure why I had this in the picture. This is just a, a pre made pigtail for one, but I was counting the number of pins, so if we're doing the video, I wouldn't mess you guys up. But uh, this is not how I'll be doing it. This is just an extra I have for the harness services I used to offer, which we no longer do. That's why I'm doing this video to show you how to do it. Okay, and. M2, we know we're not going to use this smaller wire here. If I can remember how. So, okay, same way. Put some tension on it while you pop the lock back. You guys get to watch me struggle in real time. Pen tool. Then, uh, okay. There's that one. Now, with this connector, number four is the factory starter lead. Clean up the back. Connector face. Okay, so. This one, the black one with the white stripe, that's going to be the starter lead. It's not carrying any amperages. We're jumpering it in the fuse block, so all this is doing is carrying the starter signal from the ignition switch back to the relay that's going to be done on a plug-and-play panel. And that will be a separate video. And these two here, I typically leave these much longer and bring, these are both 12-volt uh, feed to the front half of the car. I typically leave these longer and crimp them like I sh like I showed you on that previous piece. But since this one had a some sort of repair already done to the harness, I'm actually going to cut these way back to here, which I don't feel good about doing, but it's the only way to make a clean connection. If you're doing this yourself, you know, leave eight inches of of uh, these wires outside the connector to to add the butt connector to. And I'm extending this with a six gauge cable to run to the battery. And this is a six gauge butt connector. Yeah, I'm doing this with a fancy set of crimpers, but you can do this with a vise and a bolt and just tighten a, a bolt down against it in a vise. Let's see if we can find a. Uh... Okay. So you have a vise, you have a bolt like this. It's as simple as putting the bolt against the butt connector in the vise and smashing it down and getting yourself a crimp. You don't have to have the high dollar crimpers. So there's that piece. There's that piece. Now let's go ahead and strip back all the wires that we know we're keeping on this piece. These crimpers are available from Ballinger, just like the, uh, I should, the strippers are available from Ballinger. Those big crimpers are also available from Ballinger. I get all of those. Okay. And now, 
see how many pieces of pre-cut heat shrink I have here. These butts are almost a bit tight for these size wires, but they, they go right on. Like I said, nothing in here is carrying any amperage short of this fuel pump wire, and I would never recommend powering anything larger than a 255 through the wiring from the trunk. If you're powering a larger fuel pump, then you want to put a remote relay up towards the front half of the car and just feed yourself a, a relay trigger ground signal up to a remote relay in the front half of the car. So if I got the uh, heat shrink on any of these. Okay. Like I said, I wasn't particular about the length of each one of these wires because not having all the Butt connectors stack up on top of each other makes it actually easier to, to bundle the harness up. So did everybody get a piece of heat shrink? No. And one more butt connector. That's it for those. Okay. Get these other wires off the table. Gone. Okay. Now. That one. Now from experience, I know uh, 55 inches from the edge of this connector to the end of this cable, actually I should say to the end of this cable for the battery relocation into the trunk. And I have some six gauge cable here. Six gauge is probably overkill. You could probably easily just get away running an eight gauge. It's, just, it's really just power feed to the front half of the car. Excuse me while I crudely strip this back. And now I find a piece of heat shrink. Slave it. Make sure that fits. Golden.
I know because I've done enough of these that 55 inches from there to here on my table. Just leave that like that for the customer. Now, this we're gonna now 12 pin Molex, uh, female body, male pins. The uh, also in the uh, write up on casewalkmr2.com. Pay no attention to the wire colors. These are actually SW20 wire colors, but these are the pin positions that I like to use on the connector body. I'm going to have the same, all the same info on the CaseWalk MR2 site underneath the AW11 chassis harness notes. But both of these connectors are in the trunk. Uh, this will be going to a plug and play panel uh, leading towards your ECU. The, the, the mating into this is in the trunk, which leads to the to the dash in the front half of the car and the mating into this is in the engine bay. So this is actually just going to loop back to this connector body. Now, what I'll do is I like to extend the blue with some blue. This is the, actually the fuel pump wire. I don't get color matching on all of it, but any of the larger gauge stuff, I try to make it uh, obvious from looking at it, what it is when I put it together, it just simplifies doing all the connectoring. If connectoring is a word. And I'm just gonna pick a length. That looks like a good length. I'll just end up making all the other wires match that length. I'll trim them. So. This is going to be the ground. I'll extend that with a piece of black wire. the ignition on I believe that is it the only other large wire will be the start wire which also runs back to here for the start relay signal now the rest of these the rest of these I'll just extend with Tefsel all in white I know every time I use a different pair of cutters to cut the wire, whatever's closest. One by one. Luckily, compared to an SW20 chassis harness, this is, uh, like I say, a lot less work, but it's certainly simpler. I was really worried off of the uh, AW11 engine harnesses or plug and play engine harness stuff in the beginning until I realized that uh, 
wasn't that big a deal. The biggest issue is the AW11 chassis harness isn't easy to remove like the like the SW20, but that doesn't matter if, if you're willing to keep that fuse box section in the in the engine bay, then we can certainly make jumpers and, and take care of everything else in the trunk. shrinking my sleeve as I said before we uh, need to get all these to the same length Okay, so pull all that to one side and give it a haircut. Now we've extended all of these. I'm going to go ahead and plug every one of these into our 12 pin Molex connector. Okay. Hopefully you can pick this up in the camera, but they have a two separate crimp sections, one to go on the wire and one to go on the the uh, insulation for strain relief. So the first thing I'm going to do is go through and crimp all the wire connections. I like to use this pair of crimpers for these larger gauge wires. And I'll get the wire and the strain relief in the same shot with the larger wire. Almost crimped it too long, or almost stripped it back too long. Okay, that's the large ones. Now, I like this. This is actually a uh, weather pack or a metro pack crimper that works really well for crimping these. Someone like me try not to wear their hands out from doing a million crimps.
And now I'll just come back and get the uh, crimp onto the strain relief onto the insulation. Now all of this can be, you know, all the crimps can be done with this pair here. And you can see I end up bending that damn pen back. Ow. Trying to go through this quickly so it's not a damn hour long video, but time will tell. wires account and all the pins terminated these are on these we're going to be using one of those there are handy dandy wire chart location chart our connector let's start with one being the tack We've done enough of these. I already know that this black wire is going to be the tack, but you can follow <laughs> on your sheet and follow back which one's the tack wire to location. So 15 off of N1 would then go to the tack position, which would be pin one on this connector. So like I said, all these di all these wiring diagrams are on the casewarpmr2.com, and I'll put a, a picture of them on the video as well. So I start us off. Tack pin one. Pin one. Tack. Pin two. Fuel pump. Pin three. Ignition on. This is the ignition on for the AW11. Uh, pin four. Pin four is reverse. I'm just going to run a pigtail out for reverse lights. And then this person can wire to the reverse lights in the trunk. Reverse lights. I'll go back up. Say so I'm bundling it up because I'm shipping this harness to a customer. We no longer offer this service, but I'm showing you guys how to do it. So that's why I keep using the term customer. Now, pin five, check engine light. Check engine light on here. My diagram. Pin one, that's just green wire. Five, check engine light. Six, start signal. Start signal actually comes off of this piece. We'll come back to that. Seven, ground. Seven ground alternator light. Eight oil pressure yellow with a black stripe. Same for SW20s and AW11s. Oil pressure pin nine. Let's see. Pin ten is speed. AW really has no speed signal, but I still send the wire up front in case somebody wants to splice into it. An aftermarket dash, S2000 dash or something. 11, water temp. Should be the only wire left. Yellow, yellow with a green stripe, same as SW20. So that's all of those. Now, I know that from this connector to the face of this connector 
is 33 inches. So I need to add enough wire length off of this wire to tie in the start signal. So we're going to extend the start signal wire off of the M2. stretch here, peeps. Okay. That's there. Right there. So I've done enough of these. I got marks on my table. So that's 33 inches from the back of the connector to the back of the connector, which is really you're connecting it to this connector, which I try to keep these at the same height. Push that pin too far through. Okay, so strip that. Sometimes I prefer to use these. These are a ratcheting type and force you to go all the way to the fullest crimp position before they're released. Obviously, they got a little lever back here, but it's a pain in the ass once there's a load on it. So this style allows me to crimp down till I feel there's enough crimp. The issue is with that, if you pick too small of a die and you crimp it down, you actually cut the end right off. So start would go to pin six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. doing here just pulling this all tight so I can get a zip tie on this portion right here these two connectors stay in the trunk this runs into the engine bay this great other end of this is going to be down near the fuse box here so you can see what we got there's that piece put some split loom on it trying to look like an idiot while I'm doing it And how cool is that? Just like that, I've showed you how to do the chassis harness simplification portion for the AW11. This, this end here will connect to the battery. This part here will power the whole front half of the car. This is all the signals from whatever ECU you're going to be putting into the trunk that you're going to need to be feeding forward. This is going to be the, uh, essentially, uh, you saw it here, tack, fuel pump, ignition on, reverse lights, check engine, start signal, ground, alternator light, oil pressure gauge signal, a speed signal to the front if, if you need it, 
and water temp and there's also an extra uh, unused position that we use for the AC uh, command typically in SW20s but you could also figure it out for the AW11 and that's the piece that we just made and this is the piece that I showed you we were going to what it was going to look like and there we go you have a an exact copy same piece and that's how you simplify the chassis harness and the AW11 there'll be another video detailing how to build the plug and play relay panel to attach this to that you would attach your engine harness and your ECU to but this is essentially the only piece you need to build to attach your engine harness and ECU section to the AW11 uh, thanks for watching. This is Eric Hux at Hux Racing. Thank you.